Hey, this is Naltzer, and this is a look at the late tier German battleships. At tier 7, we have the Gneisenau, six 380mm guns, torpedo systems, very quick, fairly nimble. The weaknesses of the ship, though, the six guns, you do feel like you're not hitting the target as often as you would like at medium or long range. Also, the nose and the stern only have 25 millimeters of armor, which is easily, easily overmatched by every single battleship that you will face equal or higher tier. And on top of that, it's fairly easy to get into the Citadel. As long as the target, the Gneisenau, is bow or stern on directly, go shooting directly at it. You're a battleship. You can easily overmatch it. Just don't shoot low. Make sure you shoot fairly at the tip of the bow to get down. But it's a very weak area of the ship. It's a vulnerable spot that everyone needs to exploit. However, if you're in a brawling range and you're using your torpedoes or guns, who gives a crap about the accuracy when you're that close? 15,000 with the main battery and then finish it off with your torpedoes. That is the Geniza now in a nutshell. It is a very welcomed ship having the torpedoes. I do recommend keeping vigilance. I did swap out concealment to pick up manual secondary because it's a tier seven. That's the threshold that it starts at. We have the premium tier seven in the Seanhurst. This is pretty much the exact same ship except for Instead of 380, it has 283 millimeter guns, nine versus six. It has the same glaring weak point, 25 millimeters at the top of the bow. If anything hits there, it'll easily break through as a battleship equal or higher tier. But these are sort of a, a raider. You really wanna get in close if you can and use the nimbleness, the torpedo systems, the fairly reasonable rate of fire against your enemy. And I've really enjoyed the Seanhurst. It started out as a beast. They brought it back before it was actually released to the public. It's still a really strong premium ship. I can't imagine you feeling like you didn't get your money's worth with this ship because it's really fun. Same sort of build though as the Gneisenau. now. Vigilance, manual secondary. Sure, you could go accuracy. Sure, you could go concealment. Sure, you could do whatever the hell you want. I just have every single ship, and I want the variety. I feel like the Germans excel at brawling. I want to get in close. Now, the one thing that's different about the Schoenhurst versus the others is the small caliber. You are going to have to use HE more often than any other German battleship. You do benefit from the one-fourth calculation on HE's ability to do damage or shatter, depending on the armor, and... That's a pretty critical aspect of the ship, so don't be afraid to switch to HE if the target is bow and you don't have a good AP shot. Light the target on fire, keep up the rate of fire, and you will be able to deal with whatever is in front of you. At tier 8, we've got the Bismarck. Legendary ship, 4x2, 380mm guns. You really notice the extra two guns compared to the Gneisen now. Its AA protection is honestly kind of ridiculous, and I didn't really notice that. The Bismarck does have 32 millimeters on the bow and the stern, so it's gonna be difficult for anyone to do damage except for the Yamato straight on. This does not have torpedoes. It is a secondary style ship. I do really enjoy it. And you have hydroacoustic for the first time. now. The launch of the ship had a very extended range hydroacoustic. The one that you have access to now is a little bit nerfed. I think it's honestly fair. The ship is pretty dominant at times, and the old hydro made it ridiculously dominant. However, still a great ship. Secondary battery build. I like to pick up Superintendent instead of Vigilance for all my hydroacoustic ships. I have a good feeling when torpedoes are about to be sent my way. I don't need the extra detection. I know that Hydro used correctly is gonna be better than having vigilance and trying to use Hydro along. The extra chargers on your heel, your aircraft is welcomed. If you can't discern when a torpedo is being sent your way and when to preemptively use Hydro, then I would say stick with vigilance. 
And this is this is very much the first ship that is universally accepted as 100% manual secondary secondary build 10.6. It's ridiculous. It's stupendous, and I love it to bits. Plus, I got the camo now, so she looks awesome. We've got a premium tier eight in the Terrapits, the first German ship ever introduced to the game. It is pretty much the same ship, except for it subs out a lot of AA protection, if you notice, for torpedo systems. It has the same armor profile, the same sort of speed, concealment, everything you expect. They recently buffed the secondary range. So now it pretty much is the Bismarck without hydro and with torpedoes, and it feels great. But the one thing I didn't really recognize until I did this is the AA protection's really bad compared to the Bismarck. Definitely take advantage of that, aircraft carriers. Don't be afraid of the Terrapits like you would be against the Bismarck equal tier. But, Terrapits. You get in close, you use the torpedoes, you use the secondaries. It doesn't have hydroacoustic, so I do recommend keeping vigilance. Manual secondary, advanced firing training. You used to say, well, I don't know, that's right, go accuracy. No, go manual secondary. It's a beast, just like the Bismarck. It's a beast with the secondaries, plus the torpedoes. It's a really, really fun experience. It's a great premium. The nice thing about the Germans is they've got a lot of great premiums for you to experience. There really isn't a bad premium to pick up between this and the Schoenhurst. I, I just, I have so much fun getting into a brawling scenario, getting the guns going. Yeah, sure, the accuracy is pretty subpar on the guns. Yeah, sure. You're starting to see that your gun caliber is not keeping up at this tier. You know, you're at 380. There are ships that are at 410, 406. Just be aware of that. If you're shooting it, boy, just shoot the top of the hull. It's a massive target, and most of your shells will hit it and do massive damage. At tier 9, we've got the Friedrich der Grosse. Now, I just want to make sure everyone realizes they all have turtle back. They're all very difficult to citadel at close to medium range. We've got two guns to select from, 406 to 420. It's basically a question of rate of fire. A little bit higher alpha damage for a little bit slower rate of fire. The armor is what you would expect. It's got 32 millimeters at the top of the bow and the stern. Aim high, you'll be able to do your HE damage. If you're a Yamato, also you'll overmatch it. Friedrich der Grosse also has a little bit higher deck armor on average. So if you're shooting HE, you really want to hit the superstructure or the top of the bow slash stern. If you're shooting AP and you're trying to stick it in the ship, the best consistent target, top of the bow on the stern when it's a little bit flatter, also the top of the hull, you really want to go for large center mass. You can't really play for citadels when you're shooting at these things. But, you know, it's, it's the standard German thing. If you've shot at Germans, you know how to deal with them. If you're a German battleship, you really want to bring your secondaries to bear. You want to keep good angling so they're AP bounces off more often than not. I have a lot of success in my Germans for being aggressive and you just gotta maintain that aggression. Don't ever let up. You get access to faster rate of fire, which I highly recommend. Because the turret traverse is so good, you honestly don't notice the slowing of the turrets when you pick up this module. It's one of those things where it's like, oh yes please, I would like faster shooting guns. So the Friedrich der Grosse, I've really enjoyed it. You know, I didn't enjoy it as much as the Grosse Kua first or the Bismarck. However, it's grown on me, and I think it'll grow on you too. At tier 10, we have the Grosse Kua first. Big 12, 420 or 406, it's up to you. Millimeter guns, really big target, very slow turn sir radius. Look at that for turn radius, very big. It could actually be seen from air quicker than the C. It's just a really big target. Again, top of the bow, 32 millimeters. Very tiny spot though, if you're trying to shoot it. And once again, same sort of build, superintendent for hydroacoustic. You've got manual secondaries, I love that. Faster rate of fire, concealment. That's the one thing that I always pick on everything. And the reason you do that is target acquisition is just bad. 
getting a little bit more time while not being detected is worth far more than target acquisition could ever give you. It's just a little bit more concealment goes a long way. But this sucker is beautiful, beautiful. I've had so many fun games in the Grosse Kua first. That extra three guns, you really feel it compared to the Friedrich der Grosse. Well, actually, Friedrich der Grosse, is it a, uh, is it a three gun turret? No, it's a two. Wow, yeah, it's a huge upgrade. Four, four more guns. Sorry, sorry. Not just three, four. Yeah, you really feel the extra guns. It's, it's really intimidating. Aircraft, it's seen from space. It's really flat. Torpedoes the same way. You need to be actively using your hydroacoustic. If you go into an area where there's a lot of enemies, it's just really dangerous. But if you consider all of the plus and minuses of the ship, it can do a lot of damage. It can take a lot of damage. It has the ability to see torpedoes. It has the ability to fire pretty fast. I really like a drill and rush on all my Germans, you might have noticed, because I like to be aggressive. And that is the entire German line. Brawlers, aggressive. Enjoy your time with it. Very protected citadel. It has some strength and weaknesses, just like every line. You need to make sure you try and minimize the weaknesses and maximize the strength. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.